This is the Independence Blue Cross Bull Session, a weekly recap of your 2023 Phillies. Broadcasting live from Chickies and Pete's. Tonight's show is brought to you by Team Toyota, BCWSA, Fogo de Show, Independence Blue Cross, and Capital Grill. Now, here are your hosts, Phillies PA announcer Dan Baker and Mickey Morandini. All right, welcome to the Independence Blue Cross Bull Session live from Chickies and Pete's in South Philly. We're at Play 2. If you're in the area, come on down. I am John Brazier filling in for Dan Baker and joined by my co-host today, Mickey Morandini, because you have to do Dan Baker or Harry Callis when you say Mickey Morandini. <laughs> All right? What's up, Mick? You do. How you doing? I'm good. How you doing? Big game tonight. Well, I got to tell you, we're going to get right to our guest, uh, special guest. But, yes, it was a needed win on Saturday for my sanity, for I think a lot of people <laughs> in the Delaware Valley sanity. And uh, it changed uh, the tide, changed our impression of what's going to come up. But let's bring on our special guest, Tom McCarthy. It is the, I'm going to use a big word here, Tom, yeah. the indefatigable Tom McCarthy. You know what I that have, means, Mick? I have no idea what that Probably means. Probably one of a kind? No, it means oh. someone who's just, <laughs> he's tireless. He just, just get, you just, he doesn't. He doesn't tire. He doesn't stop. The guy just doesn't stop. He's the Energizer Bunny. He is. He's, you see him on TV, hear him on the radio. Uh, he is everywhere. T Mac, how you doing? I'm doing great. And my wife sat next to Brazier at the uh, last game in Arizona, and she was really worried about his uh, sanity, <laughs> to be honest with you. She <laughs> said, He really takes it serious. I said, Well, everybody does. And she said, No, no, no. He really takes it serious. Well, yeah. Meg should be happy. She thought it was great, though. Meg should be happy she wasn't with me on Friday night because oh, that was a tough one Friday to be with night somebody. When, yeah, when Craig Kimbrell came in and unfortunately the game time yeah. home run by Thomas, the hats. You know the hats they gave us, the black hats with his uh, yeah. 2023. Yeah. Yeah. You threw right? it, right, uh, Tom? I didn't even throw it. I basically <laughs> took it off my head and I pulled an Incredible Hulk. I didn't think I had the powder, and all of a sudden I went. Can, can, you, I, can you do a phone book? Can we get you? Are there any phone books <laughs> well, anymore? You give me a you give me a blown lead <laughs> in the playoffs, right? Okay, Have the phone funny. book ready, that's and I funny. might. And I literally did it, and I did it twice. I went, and then I went, and then I threw it into the stand. So I'm trying to think who is the lady in front of me. Looked at me like I was completely like possessed. That's really uh, funny. Rob Holiday was scared for my health because he was right next to me. Uh, I was calm by the, but I was just nervous and calm. So Meg saw the good part of me. Yeah, no, she enjoyed. She enjoyed the heck out of it because, you know, she sits and watches the games and she's watched the millions of games just like, you know, Mickey's wife Peg has over the years for the boys. And obviously Peg watched Mickey's games too. Sometimes. So, so, she, so she'll, <laughs> you know, she'll watch it, and she, but she doesn't have the same angst as everybody else because, you know, she's always – you know what she said about Alec Thomas? I, I'm telling you. Boy, he had a really nice smile coming around those bases. He was so happy. His mom and dad must have been very happy for him. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how she was that's looking That's an observation. At it. I, did yeah, not yeah. I wanted to punch him in the face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You yeah. wanted to wipe that smile off his face, which we all did at that point. And we yeah. streamed out of the ballpark that day, you know, with all, you know, all the Arizona Dimebacks fans feeling high and mighty and, you know, they're ragging everybody that had a Phillies jersey and just it was well, it was not pretty. The funny thing is is that everywhere we go, and you guys probably know this, but everywhere we go, they do try to compare their ballpark atmosphere to our ballpark atmosphere. And listen, I know that we would probably do the same thing, but I, I was privy to a conversation of the, you know, whoever did the entertainment for Chase Field, how proud they were of themselves for, for that game. And they were describing some of the things that were going on at our ballpark. And finally, somebody from their group said, yeah, but the difference is, is that they don't need any signs to tell them right. to cheer. Well, they had- and that, that ended the conversation. This was a person from their entertainment group who, who right. realistically <laughs> right. looked at it the way you should look at it. That our crowd, and not that it's that big of a deal, but our, I mean, our crowd is pretty amazing. Well, and for those that don't know what Tom's talking about, the, you know, when you go to the Chase Field, uh, I, I felt like it was almost, and this is nothing against minor league baseball. I love minor league baseball. I love the Reading Fightins and going to the AAA games, Lehigh Valley. But it just, it, it was, they had like the host, which, you know, normally you don't see that in a lot of major league parks. Like They, a, they do it more than most. More than most. Yeah. Okay, we don't have a host, but uh, they had the people with the flags up on the dugout. They had Sign holding up signs noise. say noise. Yeah. They had the big, you know, things on the on the noise. And you're right. We don't need to tell our fans great It noise. was just funny to be part of that conversation. It really was. It was yeah. very so, funny. So how did it compare loudness-wise to Philly? Um, I, I would say that. 
truest park in Atlanta was louder, louder. than Chase. But when they won the other day, it was loud. But right. that's the way it was even right. at Truist Park. I would say that it was comparable for a moment. But as Tori Lovello said, and I think Brian Snitker said this too, in Philadelphia, it's from pitch one till the end. Right. There, it's just when there's a moment. Right. You know? right. And it also so. seems like when there's a f- like fly ball that's going right to Marsh, right? They're screaming like as if it's going to drop or it's going to be a hit. But yeah. you know off the bat that it's a it's – a, and they do the same thing on like a hard hit ball in the infield. But if it's going right to somebody, at least Philly fans are smart enough to know, oh, that's going to be an out. They're not going to cheer, right? Right. <laughs> it's going to the second baseman. But they cheer. Then, I, like, then like, ooh. I was just happy that they sold it out because they, they had their questions about whether they had sold it out or not. Like even the game five, they'd sold out that day, which I guess I understand that because they probably didn't expect that there was going to be a game right. five the way the series began. All right. So I'm going to tell you this story that I might have told you yesterday, but Mick, you haven't heard this one. Uh, you came back with a team on, on Saturday night. Correct. Right after the game. Yep. I came back. Uh, sat, we flew out Sunday morning on a, on a charter with our oh, this is a good story. Our front hey, office, Mick. Mick, this is a really <laughs> funny story. Our front and office. You better tell it right. Oh, I will. Our okay. front office and our staff this is very and funny. our ownership were on this flight. Right, we had some sponsors on there as well. So we fly out. We land about four fifteen. We load up onto three Greyhound buses that the windows are you know shaded, whatever. And we have the rider truck that has all the luggage. So we're we have a police escort. Right now, you all got, of us. You got to get the sponsors right though. What's that? You got to get the, the bus sponsors right, though. Did you say Greyhound? Oh, oh, oh I, don't, I, I don't even know if it's, it's Greyhound. Academy. It's Academy. Academy. Thank you. Bus company, Thank you, yes. Tom. I yeah. didn't know who it was. <laughs> there, I, there are people that you're right. are going to you right. yeah. your neck. Thank you, Academy. Uh, but anyway, I think a lot of us are forgetting that there's an Eagles game until we got in traffic, and then all of a sudden we're on 95 you know, going north. With the police escort. With the police escort, and there's tons of traffic, and we're just weaving right through, weaving right through. We get off. Now we get on Patterson. So now it's about 5 o'clock, right? So Eagles tailgaters all over the place, right? They've probably been there for the last Lubed four, up four beyond hours. belief. Lubed oh, up. sure. We, we, with the police escort, we come down Patterson Avenue, right? Again, Eagles fans everywhere. They think we're the Dolphins because it's three, oh. it's three hours before game time. We have a police escort and all the oh, fans, so including great. kids and everybody, going, blank you, <laughs> giving yeah. us the – giving us the – you know, <laughs> the, the bird, person, the bird, yes. and screaming us and like this, and, oh you know, and we're all laughing because we're like, oh my god, they don't even know this is like the e- Philly's <laughs> ownership, and you know, some of our people. That's really it was, know, that's funny. So, that is funny. So Diego, you know, our Spanish translator, yeah. gets one of the biggest ovations. He was on that bus, so he went from an ovation on the field to getting booed in Philadelphia. <laughs> oh, he flew back with you guys. He did. He came back with us. So, uh, yes, oh I, I that was I, I finally got a taste of what it's like to be a visiting. Player on it's another team. So they story. never knew. They never found out that it was a Phillies. Uh, they might have when we took a left on Darien and to and go into the stadium. Oh, to go into the stadium. That's, that's funny. But I think most of the people that that gave us the bird, they were already going in. I don't think they paid attention to what's going around the corner. It's <laughs> so. a great story. It, it would have been better if they had thrown something at oh, the bus. Yeah. <laughs> I know, or chuck a moon or something. Just something like, like that. <laughs> yeah. Right, right, right. yeah. Which you wouldn't put it past them. Yeah. Uh, all right. So. Let's talk about the series. So uh, the first two games, obviously at home, un- the crowd was just absolutely just going bonkers, yeah. right? I mean, I know we were, we were talking about who you want in the next series, and the home field advantage for the Phillies is palpable. I mean, it's tangible. It's, it's, you can't get around it. It's, it is a motivator. You think it's more of a – is it more of a, a definite motivator or an intimidation for the other team? Obviously, it motivates us, but do you think it also goes the other way where the other, the other team gets rattled? I think it's both, and I think it's a comfort level for these players to play at home. Um, we're 6-0 and right now at home, and really, I don't think hardly any of the games have been close here. Uh, most of them have been, you know, we're bopping the ball out of the park, and starting pitching has been off the charts. Um, so I think it's a comfort level. And, you know, with the other two teams, they were young. And they had never experienced anything like this before. Houston has been here before. Yeah. Um, Texas, they're kind of young, I guess, but their starting staff's pretty, pretty uh, polished. So we'll see. But um, just, I'd rather play four games, uh, four games at home than three at home. Yeah, and potentially a game seven if there is a game seven with our crowd. Right. I mean, you know, right. first week in November. I mean, that that to me, that's the advantage. I know people are tired of the Astros. And, and just right. so people know, that's the way the tiebreaker works. So the Phillies won the season series against the Astros. They lost the season series against the Rangers. So the Rangers will have, because the records are, are the same, the Rangers will have home field if they win tonight. Houston will have home uh, – the Phillies will have home field or 
Um, it, Phillies will have home field if they win right. over the Astros. Right. So if we play the Astros game one and, and we we, it's Friday. And we advance, it'd be Friday, Saturday, and then it's uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Out in Houston. Out, out in Houston. Out in Houston yes. And then back to uh, Friday, Friday, Saturday. Friday, Saturday for game six and seven. Right. And then if the Diamondbacks ha- wind up winning, then – the American League is the home team right. throughout the whole thing. Right. Because right. they only had 84 wins. And then if we play the Rangers, then we start on the road. On Friday, Friday Saturday. Saturday. Right, yeah. right, right. So, We'd be home Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So, Mick, when you were going back to that, what I was saying previously, in t- when you guys played in the World Series Toronto, I'm sure the, uh, the, the Sky Dome was, was pretty loud. Oh, yeah. what, 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 what was your mindset when you, when you hear the visiting crowd? You're in a World Series, the biggest stage in baseball. What was your – did you block it out? Were, were you – was your mindset different from the home game? You know, you hear it pregame and leading up to the first pitch. But once the f- first pitch takes place, you're so focused on what you have to do out there that I don't think it affected us at all. It, I, I thought the vet was unbelievably was. loud in really 93. Was. I was a writer at the time, so I was, I was covering it as a sports writer for the Trenton Times. Uh, and I was young, and I had never been to a World Series game um, – you know, as a as a, a guy working it, I had been to games as a fan. I, I thought the vet was really, really loud. Yeah. I mean, it was. I mean, it was more people. I was going to say you got ten to twelve, yeah. fifteen thousand more people, and it's enclosed. Yeah. Um, but I would put ninety three crowd being just as loud as the crowds now. So it's funny because people ask about that. You know, it was the oa crowd louder? Was the oh nine crowd? Louder? And, and I tell them that it may have been, but we've distanced ourselves so much from it years-wise that right. I, I don't really – I remember it being rowdy. The loudest I remembered it being was when Victorino hit the grand slam right. against, against the Brewers. C. C. Sabathia. That place was bonkers. Right. So. The loudest I ever heard was, and I'll still – even this, this current run, playoff run, we had made the playoffs since 2011. Uh, the first game against the Braves, Strider on the mound – when Reese Hoskins hit that home run, yeah, it was run, pretty loud. I think that the, our crowd again had been starved of playoff baseball, and they were waiting for something good to happen. Mm-hmm. And when he hit that home run, I just remember thinking, "Wow, this place is like the loudest I've ever heard it." That now yeah. Harper home run again, you know, in San Diego or against San Diego. You were going today, yeah. Today's the anniversary of right. Bedlam at the bank. Yeah. That was you know crazy uh, loud, and obviously that we had a lot of moments so far in this playoffs. But, but it's just but I would expect tonight. Knowing that if we win, yes. we're going back to the World Series. I would expect – I don't even know if it's possible to be louder. It's going to be but loud. But I would think tonight would be about as loud as it's been all year. Yeah, it's going to be loud. Well, and it's, it's going to be pretty special too. I, I can't – there's going to be some surprises. Now, one of the things, uh, if you want to announce – Mick, you want to announce? Or Tom, you want to announce who's throwing the first pitch today? I think he announced it, didn't he? Didn't oh, he, I'm sure Mr. <laughs> Larry Boa will be throwing out the first pitch. I'm allowed to say that, right? Yeah, you can say it. It's, yeah. it's funny. Some of the videos uh, and um, and things on social media are different reactions from him in the dugout when they say, this guy's going to throw out the first pitch tonight. And he's got he, like his – his shrugs or his facial expressions or things. it's really <laughs> so they're so, from really creative people out so there. So on a well, percentage so, basis, what's the over under he runs out to the Oh, run. he's gonna run out. <laughs> and you know why he's gonna run out? Because he's good. He, he's doing it to tick bull off, right? To tick uh, uh, cruck off. All right. the people that don't because, want to run because they're they're the people that can't <laughs> run. <laughs> right, right, right. Out. Well, what was the consensus on the emoji when when the news came out? Larry Boa throwing oh, the first I loved pitch. It. Everybody loves it. Everybody loves Boa. Boa can order a plate of chicken fingers and everybody right. would cheer. <laughs> right. I mean, he because he personifies he Philadelphia, right? Yeah, it's he just the way he that, is. Yeah. All right. Coming up in the show, we're going to get into the series. We're going to talk about some of the unsung heroes, and then we'll get into you know the matchup tonight. Uh, you're listening to the Independence Blue Cross Bull Session. We are live from Chickens and Pete's in South Philly. Hi, it's Pete from Chickie and Pete's. It's all new and it's all for you. The heated deck at Chickie and Pete's on the Boulevard is now open. It's enclosed, heated, and perfect for the ultimate in-game experience or live music when the best local bands take the stage. Like LeCompte, Fat Mez or Jameson. Check our website for the band schedule. The heated deck at Chickie and Pete's on the Boulevard is now open every Thursday through Sunday. Chickies and Pete's.
If you're looking for a stylish and sophisticated fine dining experience, visit your Eddie V's Prime Seafood Restaurant in near King of Prussia. Eddie V's Seafood features an abundant selection of fine wines and curated cocktails to complement exquisite steaks and seafood made from the highest quality ingredients. In the V Lounge, sip on imaginative handcrafted cocktails with attitude while enjoying signature appetizers. Conveniently located between I-276 and I-76 near the King of Prussia Mall. Call them today, 610-337-7823 to schedule your night out for Eddie V's Prime Seafood. A truly unique dining experience awaits you at Fogo de Show. Fogo de Show awes patrons with their history and tradition of authentic Brazilian steakhouse, offering many cuts of decadent fire-roasted meats prepared over an open fire and served tableside by trained gaucho chefs. Fogo de Show, 1337 Chestnut Street in Center City, Philadelphia. For reservations, go to www.fogo.com or call 215-636-9700. Millions of Americans are losing their medical assistance or Medicaid coverage. If this affects you, Independence Blue Cross can help. You may be eligible to enroll in a health plan for as little as $0 a month. With Independence Blue Cross, you get the largest provider network in the area, including most Keystone First doctors and hospitals. We also offer free 24-7 telemedicine, coverage for hospital stays and prescriptions. See if you qualify for $0 health insurance and enroll today. Call Independence Blue Cross at 1-844-464-2583 or visit ibx.com slash stay covered. I sup the Philly. I sup the Philly. I sup the Philly. I ride the Broad Street line. Do you know how expensive parking is? I do not have time to deal with traffic. Because it's better for the environment. I ride SEPTA all the time. Monday through Friday. And whatever game day is. I'm out the door and at my stop by 7.30. I catch up on work when I ride. I check Twitter. I text my buddies. I watch sports highlights. Or lowlights. For real Philly fans, SEPTA is the hometown way to go. Ride with us at iSEPTAPhilly.com. SEPTA offers a variety of career opportunities. Our core business is transit, and with five modes of service, we rely on and need operators, engineers, and conductors. But it takes a host of other specialties, including mechanics, electricians, plumbers, masons, painters, carpenters, welders, and more to keep the system moving. As an employee, you will earn competitive compensation and great benefits, including medical, dental, prescription, and a pension. Visit jobs.septa.org to apply today. That's jobs.septa.org. There really is nothing like a home team advantage. That's why Team Toyota makes a great choice for your next vehicle purchase or service. With our MVP pricing guarantee, teammate rewards program, and streamlined customer experience, our award-winning operation ensures that you can trust our process. A home team advantage is nothing without the community. Our employees are part of our family, part of your town, and we're all part of the team. We're always here for you at one of our three locations in Princeton, Langhorne, and Glen Mills, or at teamtoyota.net. We now return to the Independence Blue Cross Bull Session. Once again, here are your hosts, Phillies PA announcer Dan Baker and Mickey Morandini. All right, we are back to the Independence Blue Cross Bull Session, live from Chicks and Pete's in South Philadelphia. I am John Brazier, director of Funny Games of the Fighting Phils, joined by Mickey Morandini, Phillies broadcaster Tom McCarthy. And guys, it's time. It's the Independence Blue Cross Live Fearless Player of the Week. Okay, so you gonna do last week's also? I'll do last week's too. It's the same guy because <laughs> each week during the Philly season, we name a different Independence Blue Cross Live Fearless Player of the Week. This week's Live Fearless Player of the Week is how do you not say this guy, Bryce Harper? I mean, his bold stealing of home on Saturday night, sparking the team to victory. Uh, he joined Randy. I can never say this guy's name. A Rose Arena. A Rose Arena. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> yeah. As a broadcaster, I needed some help. As the only players in postseason history to steal home and hit a home run in the same game, start living fearless today by going to www.ibx.com. Let's talk about Bryce Harper because uh, I want to get through a lot of players. But Bryce Harper, not only does he – we talked about how Boa personifies Philadelphia. Bryce Harper, I've never seen a marquee free agent or someone that comes in from a trade – who has gotten Philadelphia so well right from the get-go, who's just – there is just – we owe so much to him for our success. And you think about it, Manny Machado and Harper were – right? It was kind of neck and neck. We're going to sign one of them. Padres might sign the other. Or, uh, we had Manny in. And not saying that Manny's not a great player. He is a great player. But I think Bryce Harper has brought so much to this team and to this organization, to this fan base uh, in ways you can't even – it's hard to describe. I would agree with that. I, I mean, I think it's hard to find anybody that's had that kind of an impact, and it's it's genuine. So if you if you just sit and talk to him, and Mick, I don't know if you if you've sat and talked to him. I haven't. If you just sit and talk to him, I mean, it is 
a genuine really love for this entire environment, not just a little of it, the whole thing. Uh, he's, you remember we, we were struggling his first couple of years. We weren't making the postseason, obviously. And people used to say, oh, that contract, it's going to come back and haunt you. I'm like, guys, he's the least of our issues. Right, right. I mean, he's brought so much from a marketing standpoint. He's brought so much. Now, does he not run the ball every once in a while and it, it probably drives people crazy? Yes, that, that does happen with, when he's frustrated. But he has been, I don't know, uh, I can't. Um, I can't remember a better free agent signing. I truly can't remember a better free agent signing. You know, you look at the impacts that guys made, like Tommy. Right. You know, Tommy when the Phillies signed him, that was a, a a sort of curtains drawn that we're here to play. Zach Wheeler. I think Zach Wheeler has been under. He the, might be that, number two. Yeah. If not one <laughs> like A. One A. I mean, one A. One a yeah. And this guy is. This guy is as relaxed. Zach. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, whereas well, Harper's intense, and Zach's intense, but it's just before the game, he's, he's out there watching batting practice before he pitches. You know, you got to get him his either his Chick-fil-A or Taco Bell before the game right? starts. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's sitting in the chair the other day eating Chick-fil-A, and he's got a big smile on his face, and oh, yeah. We, yeah. And we know the numbers that Zach has put up in the playoffs. Like, Whip was like 07-something. Yeah, it was the best, best in the history. But it was funny. My son's in town, and he asked me before the game, before Wheeler pitched, who would you rather have on the mound in Game Seven of a World Series game, Wheeler or Schilling? And at the that's point, inter- that's I, interesting. At the point, I said Schilling, hands down. And after that game, mm. when he went, you know, seven gave up what one run again. I was like, mm, I don't know, because it, obviously I'd like to have Wheeler in Game Six and Schilling in Game Seven oh, or yeah. vice versa. But I'll tell you what, that's a hard one. It is a hard one because yeah. I, I mean, to me, Schilling still is. He's like Jack Morris. I mean, he's still one of the best big game pitchers right. I've ever seen. So, Tom, you actually – you worked for the Mets, right? So Yeah, I left for two years and went to the Mets. Right, went to the Mets, went to the dark side. It's fine. You came back, <laughs> so we're all – Hey, they, well, they paid me more yeah, and they gave me more innings. You're back in good graces <laughs> with the Phillies. But uh, Zach Wheeler, I assume, was in the organization back then, or maybe not. No, he maybe, had not been – Okay, no. he hadn't been there yet. But yeah. still, you know the organization. How much are they kicking themselves at – because Zach Wheeler hadn't, hadn't fulfilled his potential uh, until – I mean, he was obviously had some – very good moments with the Mets, but he hadn't tapped into what we're getting right now. Well, I don't know if he would have been this pitcher if he stayed in New York, quite frankly, because I think there's, a, there's several reasons why he has advanced to what he is. I think, first and foremost, it's him. I mean, he's figured some things out. His command is really good, and, and command of the strike zone is really good. He did not have this command when he was with the Mets. I think JT has a huge, is a huge factor in his development. And, and I have to say that whatever his relationship is with Caleb Cotham and Dave Lundquist and Brian Kaplan, they have really centered him mm. to be able to figure out that strike zone. That is, to me, the biggest – I don't think he would have – he may have figured out some of it with the Mets, but I think, the, I think that the Phillies have enabled him to take that next step. But I also think he was trying to prove a point. I don't think he was happy there. I think he was mad when he, they kept him off the postseason roster. I think it was in 2015 – um, and he had to buy tickets right. to the game to, to watch remember, the postseason that, game, yeah. which, you know, I, I guess I don't know what the rules are for players, but he wasn't even given any comps. You right. know, I know our, our players probably get a couple of comps per game. Uh, so he had a bad taste in his mouth. He had something to prove. All right, let's move on to the pitcher tonight, Aaron Nola. Mick, you told us, uh, you told us last week uh, the mechanical change that uh, our, I guess our pitching staff uh, had noticed. Right. So t- tell, tell the mechanical tweak. And I don't know if you probably know this, but I had heard um, the pitch timer. The timer. He was yeah. looking at the timer to the right, which was causing him to close up a little bit. And they told him, start looking at the pitch timer to the left and keep you open. And it's made – obvious. <laughs> this last four starts have been lights out. So if that is true, it's made That's the world of difference. Says. That's what he says. Now, again, is it psychological? It could be. Right. But it does make mechanical sense. I mean, even the littlest, you know. Yeah. Plus, I just think his fastball. I don't know, but you think his, Nick, command. his fastball command has just been through the through the roof. Yeah, his postseason ERA this year is for a starter. He's got eighteen innings or so, eighteen and a third, I think it is. But he is on the verge, and again, he's got a pitch tonight, so you don't want to jinx anything. But his postseason ERA is under one from a starter standpoint. And he's getting into rarefied air. Yeah. As far as that goes. So if you're the Diamondbacks hitters, you faced Aaron Nola already, and obviously Aaron did very well. What are, what's your game plan against a Nola tonight? I go after him early. I, don't I, was, know, but I was just going to say you got to get him early. Because he's got the changeup working a little bit. 
the breaking ball, when he has that on, he throws a different speed. It's almost yeah. unhittable. And it's, if he's got command, <laughs> you better get him early. Yeah. Right. And same uh, thing with Wheeler. I also think his, I think his two-seamer has been so good. And, and, you know, that's the pitch that runs off the hip of a left-handed batter. So it, it runs at the hip of the left-handed hitter, and it sort of – it just slides yeah, right back onto Greg the corner. It's a Greg Maddox pitch. It's a, it's a Greg Maddox. Kevin Millwood had a <clears throat> yeah. really good one. Um, he did not have command of that for a lot of this year, and now he has command of it. And, I, I mean, it's my favorite pitch for a right-hander against a left-hander. It's more so than the changeup. And the other thing he's doing, he's holding runners on better. He's doing They're not great. stealing on yeah. him either. Not that a lot of runners have gotten on against Well, let them. me ask you, are you surprised that these guys – I'm so shocked. The, so shocked. These, I'm these shocked. Guys, this, they lived and died by The Diamondbacks are the best base running team in all of baseball. They take the extra base between 50 and 60% of the time, depending on the, the year. They also steal bases left and right. Yeah. They steal third more than anybody else. They have – I think it's one stolen base. I believe that's what it is. It might be, might be two now, but – that's it. I'm waiting. Corbin Carroll's been on base, you know, multiple times, and I'm I waiting for him it. to go. And he's he has it, you know, right. the feet going like pattern. that, right? Yeah. And he doesn't take off, and you're just waiting for that moment. I don't know if they're scared of JT, if they're just tentative because uh-huh. it's well with Wheeler. He only allowed he's three so this year. quick to the yeah. plate, and JT's so good with his pop time. Right. With Nola, he's better. We've had two lefties go again, but they've been behind yeah. a lot too in this series. Scott so. Palmer's son, James, is on TV. That's Scott Palmer's son. That's on the NFL oh, yeah. Network right now, James so, Palmer. You know, they, they've been behind a lot. Right. You know, so that might be part of it too, but definitely surprised that early in the game, they, they you know, they got to start creating some runs here. And, oh, yeah. And, right. and they're not a team that can hit the long ball, you know, three or four players a game other than the one game against the Dodgers. So Well, it'll be interesting too. I walked over here from the ballpark and the wind was swirling a little bit, right? So I wonder what the – what the wind pattern is going to be and how that's going to affect tonight. Well, uh, Raul Ibanez used to tell me to not look at the flags. He said the wind on the field as a player is so different than what the flags dictate. Because hmm. I, I was talking to him one day. Remember, I, do you guys remember when uh, Raul hit that ball against the Cardinals? That I mean, I was calling it on radio, and I thought it was out. And the Phillies would have taken the lead in that final game against the Cardinals that they wound up losing. Um, because of that first inning run, uh, it's, I think Skip Schumacher scored against Halliday. It was Halliday Carpenter, and I'm telling you, the wind was going out. And I was talking to Raul about this. I thought that ball was 20 rows into, and, and Raul said off the bat, it felt like it was 20 rows into the seats. He said, but the wind was different on the field than it was the, than the flags mm. dictated. It was really interesting. Wow. Yeah, because yeah, we always it look at the flags. It stopped at the warning track. We always, you look at the flags, and if it's going right, you're like, oh, man. Now, a lot of times that does dictate it. But right. he said just it's not all the time. Like, it swirls. It's a weird swirl at the ballpark. All right, so for tonight's game, let's say Nola, knock on wood, continues his success and goes maybe six or seven. Uh, let's say he goes six. Okay, he's throwing a lot of pitches. If you're Rob Thompson, both of you guys, who are you? Who do you think, you know, based on the last four games, <laughs> five games, who is who's who are you bringing in six who, seven eight nine uh, and then if he goes seven who are you bringing eight nine seven I'm bringing in Hoffman okay. well and it depends on then if lefties left right, up or right, righties right, right. Or up. eight I will probably bring in um, Sir Anthony because I think he's pitching a lot better and he's got some confidence and I would close with Alvarez Alvarado. depending on the matchups if it's eight nine I would probably go Hoffman Alvarado, Alvarado. Alvarado. Tom so I believe that. It will be based on matchups, like Mickey said. Um, I do think, I do think he'll lean more on Hoffman than Kimbrel. But I will say that Rob is a very loyal manager. Uh, his eyes tell him that there's obviously issues with Kimbrel, and the stats say that too. But um, I still think he'll lean. I I, I think Kimbrel could pitch, hmm. but I don't think it'll be in the eighth and ninth. I think it could be in the seventh. I think the first right-handed. The first right-handed sequence, if they have to go to the bullpen, will give you an indication on whether he's going to use Kimbrell or not in the 8th and ninth. Um, because if it's Hoffman, <laughs> then he's probably going to use Kimbrell in the 8th and ninth. I'm, right. a, I'm a little scared um, when uh, if they bring in Kimbrell, him coming out of the bullpen, the reaction. 
Well, he's going to have the big light show too, <laughs> right? So what, that, welcome to the jungle. What happens if what does welcome to the jungle come out in the sixth inning? Oh, uh, yeah, yes, it does. It, it, it yeah, it so, does. So wherever wherever he comes out, it's gonna, yeah, right. Yeah, the jungle might be open early. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> all right, all right. Coming up in the show, we'll get into some of that we haven't even talked Castellanos because at home, and we'll talk Schwarber. We'll talk some of the other guys. You're listening to the Independence Blue Cross Bull Session. We are live from Chicks at Pete's in South Philly. Hi, it's Pete from Chickie and Pete's. It's all new and it's all for you. The heated deck at Chickie and Pete's on the Boulevard is now open. It's enclosed, heated, and perfect for the ultimate in-game experience or live music when the best local bands take the stage. Like LeCamp, Fat Mez, or Jameson. Check our website for the band schedule. The heated deck at Chickie and Pete's on the Boulevard is now open every Thursday through Sunday. Chickie's and Pete's. If you're looking for a stylish and sophisticated fine dining experience, visit your Eddie V's Prime Seafood Restaurant in near King of Prussia. Eddie V's Seafood features an abundant selection of fine wines and curated cocktails to complement exquisite steaks and seafood made from the highest quality ingredients. In the V Lounge, sip on imaginative handcrafted cocktails with attitude while enjoying signature appetizers. Conveniently located between I-276 and I-76 near the King of Prussia Mall. Call them today, 610-337-7823 to schedule your night out for Eddie V's Prime Prime Seafood. A truly unique dining experience awaits you at Fogo de Show. Fogo de Show awes patrons with their history and tradition of authentic Brazilian steakhouse, offering many cuts of decadent fire roasted meats prepared over an open fire and served tableside by trained gaucho chefs. Fogo de Show, 1337 Chestnut Street in Center City, Philadelphia. For reservations, go to www.fogo.com or call 215 636 9700. Millions of Americans are losing their medical assistance or Medicaid coverage. If this affects you individually, Independence Blue Cross can help. You may be eligible to enroll in a health plan for as little as $0 a month. With Independence Blue Cross, you get the largest provider network in the area, including most Keystone First doctors and hospitals. We also offer free 24-7 telemedicine, coverage for hospital stays and prescriptions. See if you qualify for $0 health insurance and enroll today. Call Independence Blue Cross at 1-844-464-2583 or visit ibx.com slash stay covered. I sept the Philly. I sept the Philly. I sept the Philly. I ride the Broad Street line. Do you know how expensive parking is? I do not have time to deal with traffic. Because it's better for the environment. I ride SEPTA all the time. Monday through Friday. And whatever game day is. I'm out the door and at my stop by 7.30. I catch up on work when I ride. I check Twitter. I text my buddies. I watch sports highlights. Or well, lowlights. For real Philly fans, the SEPTA is the hometown way to go. Ride with us at iSEPTAPhilly.com. SEPTA offers a variety of career opportunities. Our core business is transit, and with five modes of service, we rely on and need operators, engineers, and conductors. But it takes a host of other specialties, including mechanics, electricians, plumbers, masons, painters, carpenters, welders, and more to keep the system moving. As an employee, you will earn competitive compensation and great benefits, including medical, dental, prescription, and a pension. Visit jobs.septa.org to apply today. That's jobs.septa.org. There really is nothing like a home team advantage. That's why Team Toyota makes a great choice for your next vehicle purchase or service. With our MVP pricing guarantee, teammate rewards program, and streamlined customer experience, our award-winning operation ensures that you can trust our process. A home team advantage is nothing without the community. Our employees are part of our family, part of your town, and we're all part of the team. We're always here for you at one of our three locations in Princeton, Langhorne, and Glen Mills, or at teamtoyota.net. We now return to the Independence Blue Cross Bull Session. Once again, here are your hosts, Phillies PA announcer Dan Baker and Mickey Morandini. All right, we are back to the Independence Blue Cross Bull Session, live from Chicks and Pete's in South Philly. I'm John Brazier, Director of Fun and Games at Fighting Phils, joined by Mickey Morandini and Tom McCarthy. Uh, all right, let's get back in. We are talking about, uh, we went through Wheeler, we went through Harper, Talked about Nola, uh, one of the uh, guys that's uh, obviously the, one of the big reasons why we are where we are is Kyle Schwarber. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's interesting because a lot of Philly talk back in May uh, or even June when he when he became the leadoff hitter again was, you know, you get the debate. Was he really a leadoff hitter? He strikes out too much. You know, it's either hit or miss. And, and I think it was one of the great – because talk about from a player's point of view, Mickey – you know what it means to the to the pitcher. All of a sudden, 
you cause chaos at the very beginning, hits a home run. It does does I mean it it's gotta cause disruption for the other team. Yeah, and I think it just it it motivates your team. But here's what Rob's thinking. I heard him say this a long time ago when they were asking about it. Schwarber's gonna lead off in the first inning. And then after that, he right. just gets thrown into the mix. So he could be a cleanup hitter with the right. bases loaded coming up the second time. That doesn't make him a leadoff hitter. You know, so, you know, let him do his thing in the first inning. How many, he's hit like, what, 12 or 13 leadoff homers this year? He's I got, don't know what the number yeah, is. Yeah, so, so he's got a dozen, and then he's got um, – it's either 11, and then he has 12 first pitch home runs overall. Or It's a crazy number. Right, and – you know, the the speed thing isn't as important as it used to be with your leadoff right. hitter. It's not as important. He did uh, he did get the country tacos last year. He did have the first yeah. stolen base in the World Series. But I'm more, you know, how how good is it for Trey Turner to hit after right. Schwarber and, and before, before Harper? Harper. Right. I mean, really. Yeah. I would love oh – my God, I might have been a Hall of Famer if I hit between those <laughs> two. But, I mean, think about it. And – you know, Trey, and we were talking about Schwarber, but Trey, when once the f- crowd gave him the standing ovation, he's been unbelievable. Right. Well, plays. let's go back to Schwarber. So, if if you're Merrill Kelly, right, Schwarber's already had two home runs off you in the last game. So, if you're Merrill Kelly, how are you? And, he, and he's got a great eye. He'll he'll let pitches that mm-hmm. aren't in his comfort zone. How do you how are you pitching Kyle Schwarber? Well, he's going to get a cutter, I think. I, I mean, to me, he's not going to get a straight fastball. I think you saw that with Zach Gallon the other yeah. day. He completely and changed. He completely changed the way he approached him. So Zach Gallon, I think, you know, I think I have this stat correct. Matt Gelb from the Athletic wrote this. So, thirty six, I think it's thirty six games this year. Zach Gallon started the game with a fastball 35 times. So that's what Schwarber was sitting on it. So he's expecting a fastball. The other day in Arizona, it, it was a it was a I think it was a cutter. It was might it have been a, a slider. I know it was I something it was broke. Sli- yeah, it was something with break. Yeah. So I, he, to me, Merrill Kelly has better command of that stuff, that secondary stuff. So it's either going to be a sinker away or it's going to be a cutter in. I think it's going to be a cutter. But he better have his location because again, oh, Schwarber yeah. is going to just, you know, look at it. He's got a great yeah. plate discipline. <clears throat> Excuse me. And just take the walk and let Turner start to get into the damage. Yeah. I mean, it's – Pick your poison. Pick your really. poison right, right now. I mean, there's certain spots in this, this lineup, obviously, that are, that are cool right now. But the top definitely isn't one of them. Right. The one, two, and three definitely is not one of them. Now, and four and five are and cool. I, and four and five, five's getting better. He's getting better. And four hit a couple of ball hards. The other day. One, the center field he hit hard. So, hopefully, something mentally is going to click with I also Boehm. think Boehm uh, – Reacts well to home crowd. Like everyone does, but Bohm especially, I think, is better. His numbers are better at home. Better yeah. at home, where he you know comes up with the big moments. Uh, and again, yeah, what I love about this team is that, as you just said, there's guys that are a little cold, some guys that are hot, but then it can switch. Right. Right. So you know Schwarber, everyone's waiting for Schwarber in the NLDS, right? And all of a sudden he arrives big right. time in NLCS. Uh, and same thing. Stott maybe was good in one series, kind of quiet in the other series. But we have enough weapons, especially. I mean, if you're a posing pitcher, you're a Diamondbacks pitcher, or if we make the World Series the next team, and you're facing, you know, your Real Muto and Castellanos and whoever towards the end, mm-hmm. right? I mean, that's that's pretty. It's it's almost like facing the Braves, and the Braves were also scary towards the end. And we're hitting the long ball. I mean, we're not really haven't been a team that we're going to string four, five, six hits together. We just really haven't been that yeah, team. Yeah, think, think about 15 straight solo home runs before the yeah, Harper one. So right. if we continue to I mean, hit home runs, I don't know if anybody can beat us. Before the JT one, excuse me. Yeah. All right, well, let's move away. Let's go to Turner. So Turner obviously made the big, you know, started off slow. Uh, and then, you know, the, the standing ovation, everyone knows about the standing ovation. The next thing you know, he's just taken off from there. And he's been pretty consistent you know, throughout the playoffs. What are you seeing? And he had a good game against Merrill Kelly the last time, mm-hmm. right? So what are you seeing from Trey Turner tonight? Well, I think, I mean, for me, I, I don't think there's any question that what happened the first two-thirds of the season is, is over. Right. You know, he's just, not that, he's just not that hitter anymore. He's the hitter that you expected uh, him to be when you signed him. So uh, he's just consistent. I mean, he's hitting just under, I think it's 430. It's dipped a little bit, but how, how, how it couldn't, I don't know. He's just under 500 for the postseason, the whole postseason. So, I, I, I don't know. I just think he's he's rolling. He's and, just rolling. And he's not swinging at bad pitches like he was. He's getting yeah. good hitters' right. counts. He's hitting the ball the other way. <laughs> he's still turning on the ball, hitting the ball out of the ballpark. And we know his speed on the bases can create havoc. So, 
All right, let's go to Cassianus. Now we're going to have uh, Liam at the game today. Mm-hmm. Right now, Liam went to Arizona, I assume, or, or maybe Liam didn't. was in Arizona. <laughs> yep. Okay, yep. so, uh, but I think Cassianus is just at home. He's someone who feeds off the energy, feeds off the crowd, right? I mean, it's, he's, he's been pretty, pretty powerful at home. Yeah, so he has only one hit in this in the league championship series, and, and he's been striking out a lot more. But you mentioned, uh, Mickey, about Bohm's ball to center field. I thought the ball he hit to center right. field would have been out, would have been out of our ballpark. Right. If the roof was open, it would have been out of their ballpark. So that gives me a little bit of um, comfort that he's going to figure it out for at least – that he's figuring out the yeah. swing again. He's the most confusing hitter on this team to me yeah. because he'll go through stretches where yeah. he's on, you know, you can't get him out. And then all of a sudden, like I thought in Arizona, he was swinging so hard. He was. His helmet, his helmet, helmet almost helmet, popped yeah, off right. like 10 different swings. Well, I was driving Larry and I don't know if it crazy. because it was a bigger ballpark or whatever it may be, but home when he was hot, it was a nice, smooth, you know, compact swing. So yeah, as Tom said, hopefully that, one ball he hit the center field um, will get him going again because we need that bottom of the order to do some damage. Yeah, yep. the bottom of the order was doing the most damage of any bottom of the order in baseball in the postseason. Uh, they've cooled off, though. I mean, obviously, Rojas is really struggling offensively. But, um, but Rojas, obviously, it's, it's almost like when Kevin Stocker came on right, your team. Right. And what did Larry Bowe tell just Kevin catch Stocker, the base, catch, catch the, the ball. Don't worry about what you do offensively. And ironically enough, Kevin Stocker hits over 300 that year. Right. Uh, but Rojas, you know, we've seen him what he what he can do with his glove. That's all he needs to do is catch yeah. the ball. Whatever he's giving you is, he is, made, is gravy. He has made three <laughs> catches look just easy. I mean, just easy in this postseason that nobody else would have gotten. Corbin Carroll's walking away thinking, I should have two triples <laughs> right. in this series. I was privy to this conversation in Atlanta, and I think I shared this on the air when we were doing radio the other day. So I introduced Johan to Doug Glanville. Now, to me, Doug Glanville was as good a defensive center fielder as I've seen. I mean, truly, he was so good. He was elegant the way he went back and got baseballs. So I introduced him to Johan, and they started talking about center field stuff, Hmm. and it was so cool. It was one of the best – conversations I've heard this year between two players and they were both speaking the same language uh, Doug was was talking about pre-pitch setup and Rojas said well this is what I do and it was very similar you know he said I'm moving as I see the pitch coming in hmm. because I am deciding where he's going to hit it based on the way it's going to move I'd be worried about whether my shoes were tied, whether I was <laughs> right. going to fall. I mean, just to have that vision, um, the pre-pitch vision that he has. I mean, the best center fielder we've had in history, in my opinion, Gary Maddox. Gary Maddox. Yeah. So do you think he's approaching? I mean, obviously, it's first year in Major League Baseball. But do you think he could be go down in history as one of the best center fielders? Uh, it's good. I mean, he's going to have to win, was it, nine? Yeah. A lot of gloves. Right. Right. I know. Gary, I mean, Gary was obviously Gary, very good. Gary was really good. I mean, if you'd have told me in June that, this team would be really good defensively, I would have probably laughed in your face. <laughs> right. I mean, I would have. Yeah. I'd be thinking, what are you talking about? Yeah. This team has played really good defense, other than a few hiccups in Arizona. Um, and it's all because of him. Yeah. Because we were able to move Marsh over and That's Pache over. And, um, you know, Trey's been up and down. He's made some yeah, errors. He's, he's really been the most. Stott's a goal glover. Yeah. Bryce has been really good at. I'm right. really impressed. That's yep. not Bones, easy transition Bones to make. Been making Bones unbelievable been plays. At a third. lot better at third. That one play he made on his knees, uh, yeah. absolutely. You know they always say be strong up the middle, and if you take JT Stott, Turner, and go, my God, that's really good up the middle. Yeah, and then Marsh. We haven't talked about Marsh, and Marsh to me again is another guy that feeds well off the energy, and I love the energy he brings to the team in general. It's just a good fit, and I and I also think that you know, when we moved into left field. The only criticism I would say about Marsh was that sometimes he was too deferential to Castellanos or to Schwarber I would agree. in calling off, you know, calling him off. Whereas it looks like Rojas is much more, I guess, decisive. Or, or the other guys know I that. I think they know. Or they, they know, know yeah. that Rojas is yeah. going to get it, so they just stay right. yeah. in their lane. Whereas, and that puts Marsh in a great situation where he is, you know, very good fielding left hander or left fielder, where he's fast and you know you put. But the whole thing was, as you said, Mick, was that. Harper can play first base. Not only can play first base, he plays a really good first yeah, base. Yeah, he's been good. Right? So, all right. Coming back, uh, we'll go to break. But when we come back, we're going to line up because we had a debate off the air. Who you want to play? 
the Astros or the Rangers. I know you guys have some opinions, uh, but we'll go through. We'll kind of talk about both those opponents, assuming we get past, and that's a huge assumption. But uh, And we'll also preview again tonight's game. So coming up, you'll listen to that. We are live from Chickens and Pete's in South Philly. Hi, it's Pete from Chickie and Pete's. It's all new and it's all for you. The heated deck at Chickie and Pete's on the Boulevard is now open. It's enclosed, heated, and perfect for the ultimate in-game experience or live music when the best local bands take the stage. Like LeCompte, Fat Mez, or Jameson. Check our website for the band schedule. The heated deck at Chickie and Pete's on the Boulevard is now open every Thursday through Sunday. Chickies and Pete's. If you're looking for a stylish and sophisticated fine dining experience, visit your Eddie V's Prime Seafood Restaurant in near King of Prussia. Eddie V's Seafood features an abundant selection of fine wines and curated cocktails to complement exquisite steaks and seafood made from the highest quality ingredients. In the V Lounge, sip on imaginative handcrafted cocktails with attitude while enjoying signature appetizers. Conveniently located between I-276 and I-76 near the King of Prussia Mall. Call them today, 610-337-7823 to schedule your night out for Eddie V's Prime Prime Seafood. A truly unique dining experience awaits you at Fogo de Show. Fogo de Show awes patrons with their history and tradition of authentic Brazilian steakhouse, offering many cuts of decadent fire roasted meats prepared over an open fire and served tableside by trained gaucho chefs. Fogo de Show, 1337 Chestnut Street in Center City, Philadelphia. For reservations, go to www.fogo.com or call 215 636 9700. Millions of Americans are losing their medical assistance or Medicaid coverage. If this affects you individually, Independence Blue Cross can help. You may be eligible to enroll in a health plan for as little as $0 a month. With Independence Blue Cross, you get the largest provider network in the area, including most Keystone First doctors and hospitals. We also offer free 24-7 telemedicine, coverage for hospital stays and prescriptions. See if you qualify for $0 health insurance and enroll today. Call Independence Blue Cross at 1-844-464-2583 or visit ibx.com slash stay covered. I sept the Philly. I sept the Philly. I sept the Philly. I ride the Broad Street line. Do you know how expensive parking is? I do not have time to deal with traffic. Because it's better for the environment. I ride SEPTA all the time. Monday through Friday. And whatever game day is. I'm out the door and at my stop by 7.30. I catch up on work when I ride. I check Twitter, text my buddies. I watch sports highlights. Or lowlights. For real Philly fans, the SEPTA is the hometown way to go. Ride with us at iSEPTAPhilly.com. SEPTA offers a variety of career opportunities. Our core business is transit, and with five modes of service, we rely on and need operators, engineers, and conductors. But it takes a host of other specialties, including mechanics, electricians, plumbers, masons, painters, carpenters, welders, and more to keep the system moving. As an employee, you will earn competitive compensation and great benefits, including medical, dental, prescription, and a pension. Visit jobs.septa.org to apply today. That's jobs.septa.org. There really is nothing like a home team advantage. That's why Team Toyota makes a great choice for your next vehicle purchase or service. With our MVP pricing guarantee, teammate rewards program, and streamlined customer experience, our award-winning operation ensures that you can trust our process. A home team advantage is nothing without the community. Our employees are part of our family, part of your town, and we're all part of the team. We're always here for you at one of our three locations in Princeton, Langhorne, and Glen Mills, or at teamtoyota.net. We now return to the Independence Blue Cross Bull Session. Once again, here are your hosts, Phillies PA announcer Dan Baker and Mickey Morandini. All right, we are back to the Independence Blue Cross Bull Session live from Chicks and Pete's in South Philly. I'm John Brazier, Director of Fun and Games and Fighting Phils, joined by Mickey Morandini and Phillies broadcaster Tom McCarthy. All right, so let's say we're going to make a big leap. We're going to knock it on wood while I'm saying it. Uh, we get past either tonight or tomorrow. Uh... And game tonight, you got the Rangers versus the Houston Astros in game seven. Mm -hmm. uh, I had my feelings, but I want to get your feelings. If you were a Phillies fan, and again, let's say we clinch tonight. Let's knock on wood and keep our fingers crossed. Who are you rooting for tonight in the second game? Who are you rooting for in that, in that deciding game? We'll start with Tom McCarthy. T -Mac, I, well, I, want, I want home field, so I want the Astros. I know we played them last year, but that to me, uh, home field is, is so valuable in the postseason. And do you think the Astros are the same team? Like the, the 
lineup wise, they have the same, pretty much the same team. They Brayu's new. They have right? Brayu and Brantley's healthy. And Brantley's healthy, uh, but the pitching staff is pretty much the same. The bullpen, for the most part, yeah. one I mean, guy could be suspended for one game. Right, Abreu, Abreu. Might, be, it might, might be suspended for a game. But but, but it seems like on paper they're not having this they, on regular season. They're not having the season that they had some of the guys. They are not. Uh, but I still think home field is just so valuable, even though their their win loss record on the road is better than their win loss record at Minute Maid. All right, Mick. Yeah, I did. Oh, Tom. I mean, I want four games at home. Right. I don't care um, who it is coming here. I just I want four games at home. We play better at home. Um, and I, I think we can beat both teams. I think if we I agree with play that. like we play, have been playing, I think we beat both teams. But I would rather have just have the home field advantage is huge for this organization. And for the Astros, uh, make sure Meg doesn't sit next to me if we play the Astros because <laughs> Alvarez drives me crazy. Altuve drives me crazy. There are certain guys, maybe it's just that sting from last year, but – it's it, there's part of me that w- I've been rooting until I talk to you guys. I'm, I'm I don't know if I flip my my. Well, uh, tell everybody you want thought. Texas. I, Texas Rangers only because a it's it's for superficial reasons. It's it's because I just don't want to. I'm sick of Al, uh, Alvarez, as I said, Altuve, the whole team, uh, Verlander. I'd rather face a new team. Uh, <laughs> don't you think it'd be sweeter though if we yes, beat if we had, Houston? Yes, it would be in that regard. But <laughs> conversely, it would be that much more frustrating well, if we didn't. Uh, now, Texas, it, uh, we saw in the first series. I mean, if you remember that first game we had against them, uh, we had a big lead opening day. 5 nothing. 5 nothing. With today's starter on the mound. <laughs> yes. And next thing you know, it's like, uh, right, today's starter in the bullpen kind of fell apart. Yeah. And I remember thinking they made some you know, moves, big moves in the offseason. But I remember thinking, like, well, we got these guys before the game. And next thing you know, like, that series, they, obviously that's why we don't have home field advantage yeah. if we face them. But they've got guys that got, uh, Philly fans might not know of uh, if they haven't watched the playoffs. Yeah. But uh, they've got some good young players. Well, and they also have two pitchers that one we know very well. The other one I hope Philly fans remember um, – because he pitched for the Yankees when he faced the Phillies and Jordan, Jordan Montgomery. Montgomery. So he, yeah. they weren't there at the beginning of the year. Scherzer and Montgomery were not there at the beginning of the year. Nor was Aroldis Chapman, but the Phillies have faced him enough. Uh, but if you remember Jordan Montgomery, remember he pitched for the Yankees? Remember the pandemic crew used to sit outside Citizens Bank Park yep. during the games when nobody was in the stadium? And he, he, so the Phillies beat him one day, and his excuse was, well, you know, I mean, all these people were yelling outside the ballpark <laughs> because I just I couldn't concentrate. Uh, I'm telling you, that was – I'm, I'm – I'm uh, paraphrasing, but that was the gist of his conversation. Well, if we played Texas, we better bring that up. Well, oh, right? it's definitely going to be brought up. Right. I hope it's going to be brought up. Um, well, you might have to resurrect it because I don't know. I've, I've never heard that story. Or you have Or, I, or I can't remember the oh, story. Oh, yeah, yeah. All it right, was well, very funny. Well, we got to make sure we get that on the radar. Yeah. Uh, so Jordan Montgomery is a crafty lefty kind of, right? Yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's got a re- – his, his, his breaking pitches are his bread and butter, and they are really good this year. Like, this is a – He's going to make a lot of money this offseason. He's a free agent. Uh, so somebody's going to sign him, and it may be a crapshoot, but he's a pretty good pitcher. And then Evaldi, Evaldi would go two. No, right? no. I, Evaldi, I'm sorry, he goes one. Evaldi goes one. Montgomery, sorry, two. Two. Right? And then Scherzer, right? I guess Scherzer. I guess, John, right? John Gray will most likely be back also. And they got he's Martin Perez too, right? Uh, I think he's also in there. Or I don't maybe remember, not. actually. I'm not sure. Uh, but their bullpen to me is uh, I've watched a lot of the playoffs, and they got that Spores guy who's got good stuff, but he just can't control. He's all over the place. Right. You know, Aroldis Chapman. We've we've hit Chapman, and he's kind of all over the place. And they're they've got a young closer that's Leclerc. Leclerc, French Frenchy. Um, all right, then going to the other team, the Astros. Again, we said it's kind of the same team, but the guy who's going tonight, who threw the no hitter against us in the World Series, is he'll go five tonight. You think he'll go five? Yeah, that's. I mean, he doesn't go more than five or six. Like he's just they they baby his arm for some reason. And then we might see Hector Neris in the game tonight. Hector, right? I love Hector, Hector Neris. Hector's good people. I do. I love Hector Neris. He's one of my favorite people of all time. And let's talk about the managers because uh, three. I don't know Lavella. Johnny B. Baker. But when you look at when you look at Johnny Dusty, Baker. Johnny B. Baker. <laughs> when you look at Dusty, you look at Rob Thompson. You look at Bruce Bochy. Yeah. Right. Who has the slowest pulse of those three? Uh, Bochi. Bochi, yeah. Bochi. I mean, it's, 
Absolutely. He's got the slowest po- pulse and the slowest walk out to the mound. Yeah. Right. And the biggest head. Well, we have to. Pl- have you head. know, that's another reason why we got to root for Texas Rangers. Because the if fanatic. The fanatic will go in front. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> tell, tell, you tell it. Fanatic will go in front and, and, and the dugout. when they introduce Bochi, he's going to make it seem like his head is like a thousand pounds and he's going to rock back and forth with his hands, <laughs> his uh, whatever the fur, fur hands are out in front. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And the funny thing is every time whatever team Bochi is managing, yeah. the players on that team will get to the Fanatic and say, do Bochi, do yeah. Bochi. And, and they'll be like behind Bochi, like laughing hysterically, you know, trying to keep out of the... And Bochi will be there laughing too because he's got a really deep voice. Like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> but it is funny. Rob Thompson does and uh, Bochi are all kind of the same. You look at their expression, and my wife was saying it the other day. She's like, uh, Dusty ba- saying about Dusty, like they could score six runs against the Astros, and Dusty Baker would have the same. It's like Charlie was. He's got that, the right? toothpick. That's and the just old kinda... school mentality. Yeah. Joe Torre, I think, was the influence for Rob Thompson on that because Joe Torre never looked. He, Joe Torre looked like he had more angst when he was sipping his, his tea in the dugout than he did if anything happened with the Yankees. Right. Uh, one guy we haven't talked about, and hopefully we don't have to see him tomorrow, uh, but Ranger Suarez. Talk about Ranger Suarez, just his, you know, his, uh, I love him in a get big game situation. Talk about a slow heartbeat. I mean, that guy looks like he's just, <laughs> he's out there on the beach, yeah. you know, basically having a cocktail. Yeah, well, he is. I mean, it's, you know, Mickey, I mean, you've, you've faced pitchers that are high, inten- or played with pitchers that are high intensity. He's intense, but you would never know no. because he looks like Cliff Lee out there. The way he feels his position. Nola's kind of like that, too. Nola's like that. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're blessed to have that where you just don't have – How know. about Ranger warming up the other night? Did that, did, did that get your uh, – did you get Aja with that, John? <laughs> when, when he warmed up? Yeah. No. He, he was coming to the game. Oh. Well, I knew it was his bullpen day, right? So, if we needed to use him. Well, he was, they were going to use him. <clears throat> and then why did he not be used? Because the – We took, five uh, we, we took yeah. another lead, yeah. Yeah, so then he just – he continued throwing into his bullpen. But he would have been fine if he, if he came in, right? We would have – He would have been perfectly fine. Right, and it would have just been – He would have thrown like 12 he's, pitches. He's going to throw those pitches in the bullpen anyway, so he might right. as well – He might have went back out after the game and thrown more pitches. He might have. <laughs> <laughs> do you think – do guys throw full bullpens at this point? I don't think full. Oh, okay. I, I think it's just a touch and fill type of thing, maybe 20, 25 pitches. Yeah, okay. Not, probably not even max effort. And then before I get to predictions, Mick, what do you? If you're the player right now, let's say you're playing second base, uh, you're Bryce's start. Uh, what are you doing to prepare? What are you doing like six hours before the game? Same thing I've done all year. Nothing changes. Nothing changes. You got a routine and stick to it. And what was your routine? I mean, I would get to the park around one o'clock. Well, it's a five o'clock game today, but normally for a seven or eight o'clock game, I'd get to the park at one, have something to eat. Go watch some film on the opposing pitching staff. He'll be eating Uncrustables. There's no if doubt about that. If I had that. some aches and pains, go get ice, yep. stretch, go take batting practice, come in, and the focus starts, and maybe have a cup of coffee. And talk to Dave Hollins. And I would not even go nowhere near <laughs> Dave Hollins. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do final wrap-up. Let's do predictions. T-Mac, what's happening tonight? I think they win it. I think they win it going away tonight. I don't think it's going to be close. I think it's more about, uh, about Aaron Nola than it is about their offense. Mick? They haven't competed with us at all at home. Um, and we really, I'll be honest with you, we should have swept them on the road. We had played two poorly fundamental games. So um, I am with Tom. I think we, we kick them. I mean, they got another rookie going tonight, and he wasn't good here last time. No, so. it's Kelly. It's yeah, Merrill, Merrill Kelly. Yeah. Kelly. He's, fought he's fought 30, tomorrow. 35. Oh, yeah. he's 35. Yeah. Yeah. Fought I guess tomorrow. he's not a rookie. Fought's no. going no. tomorrow. Yeah. You know, okay. Merrill, you know, Merrill Kelly lived in Philadelphia. I do know Lived that. in Ball Kenwood. Yeah. Played Little League. Yeah, there's a lot of Philly so connections on the team. We'll still beat him up. All right, you heard it right there, and that wraps up the Independence Blue Cross Bull Session with Chicks and Pete's. I'd like to thank Chicks and Pete's for hosting His us today. His energy level was good today, Thanks to my it? co-host, well, Mickey Mordini, yeah. our guest, Tom McCarthy, our fans out there. Yeah, thank you guys Woo! for coming out. Our on-site thank producer you. engineer, Chris Ermer, and thanks to you for listening. We'll be back the next Monday, hopefully, before Game 3 of the World Series. Until then, have a great week, and go Phils. All right.